Welcome, I'm Jana with Pearl Together and in this week's video I want to give you five tips for knitting Fair Isle. So you might find these tips especially helpful if you're a beginning Fair Isle knitter, beginning stranded color work, and if you're about to join us for the Mackin' for the MRI Knit Along which will begin New Year's Day 2020. So if you're watching this video in the future and that's long past, it doesn't matter. These tips are gonna help you out with any Fair Isle or Stranded Color Work project. Before we get started with that, I wanna give a hearty shout out to all my patrons. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. We've got some fun stuff coming up in 2020. And so if you're interested in becoming a patron, head on over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together and check out what I'm offering in trade for your pledges. I have several tiers of rewards depending on your pledge amount. So head on over there and check that out. All right. Tip number one for Fair Isle knitting, use the proper yarn. So when you're knitting color work, it's super helpful to have yarn that's a little bit grippy or a little uh, hairy, if you will. It blends together. It actually uh, kind of connects to itself. And so that's really helpful, especially at the beginning of the round where you don't want things pulling apart and becoming all gappy and weird. Also, it just softens and it blooms and it's very nice once you block your project everything melds and blends together and it's just lovely acrylic does not behave that way and while acrylic yarn might be you know less expensive from your local big box store you want to use the proper tool for the proper project and really 100 percent wool is the way to go for color work knitting can you get by with acrylic? Well, sure, but it's going to be more slippery. It's going to be harder to deal with, harder to hold, and it's not going to behave the same way, particularly if you're doing a project that's going to require steaking, where you knit something in the round and then you literally cut later. Now, I haven't done that yet, but I've seen it done several times, and I can see where it would be definitely advantageous to use 100% wool that sticks together. Now, the other reason is if you had to tear out a section or you had a frog a little bit or you drop a stitch, it's going to stay put. The wool particularly that we are suggesting for the upcoming knit along is from Shetland. It's 100% Shetland wool. That breed of sheep is very, very hardy and the characteristics of the wool itself are that it maintains its shape well. So if you dropped a stitch, that loop's going to be there waiting for you. It doesn't just all collapse into a puddle. Okay, let me back up a little bit. If you drop a stitch or you have to tink back, there's not a lot, and I have yet to figure out a good technique for if you drop a stitch, how to ladder up, you know, you in color work. That's more complicated than just straight up knitting. So you want a yarn that sticks to itself better so it doesn't ladder as quickly. You definitely want it, that loop if you drop something to be just waiting for you patiently until you're able to retrieve it. So the proper yarn for the proper project is important here. So. I am using for my project for the Mac and for the MRI, the Harriet's Hat projects, I'm using uh, Jamesons and Smiths and I'll put links down below. You can use Jamesons of Shetland. There's also a uh, domestic or US based 100% wool uh, for Morehouse Farms. You can use that as well. Go stash diving and see what you have. Tip number two, swatch. Swatching is super important. Knitting Fair Isle is not the same as regular knitting. It's not the same as knitting back and forth. You're gonna wanna knit a little tube. You're gonna wanna knit a little cylinder. If you're knitting a hat or something that's color work, it's all different. Definitely take the time to swatch. Knit yourself a little cylinder or a little cuff. And my friend Ann Frost over at I Thought I Knew How Podcasts, she has a YouTube channel, which we'll put the link down below. She has some very helpful tips for swatching. So definitely go check that out. Use the technique that works for you. But if it works best for you to, you know, knit one hand, knit with your, if you're a right hand knitter and you're used to throwing and knitting English style, then do that. And if you need to drop your yarn and pick it back up for the contrasting color, yes, that's a little slower, but that's okay. We're not speed racer here. If you need to do that, that's totally fine. If you're comfortable knitting English style with one hand and continental with the other hand, then yeah, that might be a little more quick, but you want to be careful of your tension. And so absolutely you'll want to swatch. So that's tip number two is use the technique that works for you. And I'm going to demonstrate that here. And so I can hold this over here like I'm knitting Continental where I have both of these in one hand and that works pretty well, except let me tell you what happens with me is I start going along and I do my three of the background color. And now it's time for me to knit a couple stitch three of these. So 
I can go in and knit continental and pick that off my middle finger and that works just fine for a little while. But what happens with me, I notice this left finger starts to stretch out and out and it extends and then it gets uncomfortable and then I'll notice my hands starting to get tired and fatigued here. So while that might work for you, I'm I'm really not that good at controlling the tension with my left hand. I, I'm not a crocheter. I, I don't really have practiced that. What actually works best for me is a technique I saw on a video from Arne and Carlos. And it's where he just goes like this and I, you know, he might work it, weave it in and out like that on his fingers. And he just picks it right off his index finger and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't extend that up so far and he just picks it right off his index finger like that which to me, it keeps everything, it causes less fatigue in my hands and it keeps everything closer in. And that's okay for a while too. Um, but let me show you what I have kind of arrived at for myself, at least for now. So here I need to alternate a little bit. So there's another dark stitch. And what I've been doing, I noticed that this yarn always falls off. So I'm like, well, okay, that's fine. So I just let it fall off and I let it come along behind and that actually helps to control some of the tension along the back. If I just kind of carry this along the edge, along behind, I'm making sure that I also have enough yarn here that my floats aren't puckering. And so I've been just laying the yarn between my ring finger and my middle finger and just bringing that along behind. I think I do it over the top, I'm not sure. I bring that along behind, oh, that's how I do it. I bring that along behind and then when it's time, I just go in as if to knit like normal. And then I actually lift up my left hand and I just wrap it around. And that's been working for me pretty well, actually. And I'm, you know, you can feel the yarn sliding through my left hand along the back. It's just sliding through my fingers. And I go in as if to knit and I just wrap it around. I just wrap, I just go up and around in a counterclockwise, just like a normal knit stitch. So, you, my only point here is what you'll arrive at what works best for you. You just need to practice this a little bit and see, see what makes the most sense. So I just picked that up and I'm just wrapping it around. And I know that's a little cumbersome to take your hands up off your work and do that. But I have found that for me that results in the best tension so far. Tip number four, when you're working your pattern, you'll definitely want to mark the edges of the chart repeat. So if that's every 16 stitches, every 18 stitches, whatever pattern you're using, put markers. And the reason that's so important with Fair Isle is because it's not so easy to fix when you mess up. Like if you had a stitch that was the wrong color, it's not as easy to, to drop down and change things around in the same way that if you're knitting a regular hat in the round with just regular yarn in one color, you could easily drop down and fix a pearl that should have been a knit or vice versa. It's not so easy to do that with Fair Isle. So if you have a chart repeat that's 18 stitches and you mess up and maybe you should have knitted three stitches in the pattern color and you should have knitted four stitches in the background color and you have reversed that in your mind, You've only done 18 stitches. It's not that far to tink back and fix that. So after you knit one chart repeat, double check that it's correct. And if it isn't, you're not so far away that you can't just tink back in like 20 seconds and fix it, right? Way better than noticing a mistake way down several rows below that actually then you're either gonna rip a lot or you're gonna leave it and fix it with a duplicate stitch later on. It's better to just avoid those little errors from the get-go. Okay, so check between the markers as you go. As for weaving in the ends, there is, you know, there's always this ongoing thing about, well, do you want to knit your ends in or do you want to weave them in? So my last tip for you today is weaving in the ends afterward, and I'm going to show you why. Okay, what I want to illustrate here is this is my beginning of the round. I have a gold marker here. That's the beginning of the round. Now you can see... Down here, things are okay for tension and I have all these tails hanging out. And that's that's all right. You don't need to be worried about that at all. That's totally okay. But if you notice you have a little bit of a gap here, you can go in underneath and find that corresponding tail of the red, for example, and just give that a little tug to adjust the tension and to kind of suck that back together. Now, if you have followed along with some other channels or you've seen, um, the way that I did the Inara wrap, for example, when we were changing colors every couple of rows, I did show 
how I like to weave in the end of the color change as I went along. Now that was on an edge of a shawl, which is quite different than knitting in the round. And I found what happened when I tried, when I started the white here, I knitted in the end, or I weave it in in the same way that you catch it float, and it left a hole because what happens when you do that is it kind of, unless you're super careful to leave a lot of slack, you may have this stitch being pulled to the left. And so that does create a gap here. Now I will go back with a darning needle and find exactly where that is back here and loosen everything up and correct that tension before I block it. But I would suggest uh, weaving in the ends afterward so that you can adjust any tension necessary and take care of that later rather than trying to weave them in as you go, which is, I mean, I realize that it's more popular to weave it in maybe as you go because you're thinking, well, that's going to be less work later. However, you definitely don't want to have any gaps like I have here. I, you know, and again, that's easily fixed, um, but I'd rather not have to fix something. I would rather just go in and, and weave everything in later. The other advantage to that, besides being able to adjust any tension issues along here, is that you know if things tend to shift a little bit if you have one row that's knitted more tightly than another and you're not sure about the blocking by waiting you know if things shift by waiting you have some ease or some slack to move things around with blocking as well if you have not already knitted in all those tails you might have a you know a problem that's exacerbated if you after blocking if you weave in ends now you know but again if you want to try that i'm not saying don't try it because you're the boss of your knitting but just know that you might have to take a darning needle and go back and like pull that out a little bit and then either you know do a duplicate stitch over the gap or something to mitigate that little hole that i have there so it just seems safer to me as a as a newer fair isle knitter to to weave them in properly afterwards and be able to adjust any potential gapage I hope you found those five tips helpful. Consider hitting that thumbs up button, subscribing to the channel, and head on over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together if you're interested in seeing what I'm offering in terms of rewards for your pledge of just a few dollars a month. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>